Hey everybody, thanks for coming along. Today I'm going to teach you eight techniques for getting extraordinary images from common species. Okay, now the word common depends on where you are and what you're photographing. One thing that instantly comes to my mind here in Denver, Colorado is the Canada goose. They're everywhere, they're found on every lake and in every park, and people get so tired of seeing them that they don't want to photograph them anymore. But depending on where you go, for example, down in Florida, great blue herons are pretty common, and you can see them all over the place. And so I'm going to use common species, but I'm going to teach you eight techniques, as I said, for getting awesome, extraordinary images of those animals. And normally now I'm using a Sony camera and a Sony 200 to 600 f 5.6 to 6.3 lens to do all of my wildlife photography. So come with me now. Let's learn these techniques for getting awesome images from common species. Tip number one is to get low down to the animal's level and then get lower. This works especially well with waterfowl because they're sitting on the water and even a two foot difference between sitting at the water level and putting your camera down at water level makes a huge difference. But it doesn't only apply to waterfowl. I would also suggest getting low for small species such as chipmunks and squirrels and rabbits and things like that. Here's a couple examples where I got low down to the water with some waterfowl. It's a mallard duck. And then I improved the shot even more by getting even lower. My camera was right at the water level. And you can see that that improves the shot because now the background is nice and creamy. It's the faraway bank of the lakeshore. And it just is a much better shot. Another example here of a common moorhen. I got down to the grass level as these guys were walking through the grass and so my background becomes much more pure and clean and so it's a much better shot. Another example here is just a common sparrow taking a bath in a little pond but if you get down nice and low you can see how much better the shot is than if you were to shoot it say from your eye level looking down on this little bird. Tip number two is to use light to your advantage. What I mean by that is get some backlight or really low angle quality light such as a colorful sunset or just the last few minutes before the sun sets or just after the sun rises. Things with gorgeous light on them, even if they're common species, can make extraordinary images. Here's a nice shot of some really gorgeous backlight on a very common animal, a fox squirrel found everywhere here in Colorado where I live. And this is just at a local park, but you can see that the light and the rim lighting makes it a nice shot compared to just a normal shot. Here's another few examples where the backlighting was really nice and beautiful. You get that rim lighting and it almost looks like the animal has a halo when you get that. And then here's a nice example where the sun had already set and so I'm working at as a silhouette of a red-winged blackbird. And then when we have that backlight on a bird in Florida, it's a common bird called the great egret. You can see here it is with the front light on it and then you can get that glow with the backlight just by going to another position and changing your angle relative to the sun. Tip number three is to show interaction between two individuals and they can be of the same species but they can be a different species as well, something where they're fighting or interacting together. And beyond interaction, you can also get great shots, which will be above average, by just showing some behavioral shots. Here's a few examples of behavioral shots that I find interesting on a really common species. 
It's a double crested cormorant, but you can see that I've got some nice images here of these guys carrying some nesting material during the springtime. So I kind of cover more than one tip here. I've got nice wing position and I've got the behavior of them carrying the nesting material. Also in the category of behavior, I put in there birds that happen to be singing. So I've got lots and lots of red-winged blackbirds. And I think rather than just a static portrait, it's much nicer when you show them singing. I've also got lots and lots of western meadowlarks doing the same thing. And I think it makes your shot a little bit better than average. Here's kind of a cool shot of a behavior that takes place that a lot of people probably don't recognize. This is a Cuban anole found everywhere in Florida and throughout the southeast. And here he is with his dewlap extended, and it's kind of a really nice example of what you can do with just an animal that's found everywhere, but you show it in a little bit of a different way, and you get that nice shot that's a little bit above average. Tip number four applies mostly to birds, and that is to get a sharp flying shot with a compelling wing position. Something like I have on this shoveler, or even a gull that's a very common species, if it's got a nice wing position, it can make your images much better. Here's a few examples of what I consider to be nice wing positions on some very common species. Here's a few mallards. And then there's shovelers all over Colorado. So these are nice wing positions stopped with a fast shutter speed. Here's a couple of great blue herons that have some nice wing positions. When you get those perfect wing positions like that stopped, that gives your shot, again, that a little extra thing to it that makes it better than average. Tip number five is my favorite of all time. I always go for this, and that is to show the feeding behavior of your species. So whatever animal it is, if it's eating something, oh, you can just get some fantastic shots. I've got so many shots of common species eating fish or eating insects that it just makes for wonderful photography and it's a whole lot of fun to watch these animals capture prey and then eat it in front of you. So that's my absolute favorite one, is to capture any sort of feeding behavior and to make your images of common species much, much better. So one of the most common species that we have all over the United States is called a house finch. And during the spring, the males turn a little bit more red than normal. And they're everywhere. People ignore these birds. But I had one that landed on this flower down in Arizona. And that was nice, but then when he started feeding on the flowers, then it got really good, and I took my shot from ordinary to extraordinary. Here was a nice chipmunk that I found feeding on wild raspberries, and that was great to get him with those in his mouth. And I've got lots and lots of pictures of birds eating fish. Here's a species that most people would pass right by and never take a picture of, a seagull. But when you get them with a fish in their mouth, or how about a crayfish, or a crab? That's when it gets good and you can take your pictures to the next level. Here's a ruddy turnstone. That's a bird that's common throughout Florida and the southeast. They're all over the place. Most people ignore those, just like they ignore seagulls. But I photographed it with this crab, and I found it to be a very nice photo. This is a royal tern. I was photographing near some other photographers who were completely ignoring these guys as they were diving into the water and catching fish after fish. And I just got some amazing images of these terns 
with the fish in their bills. And hingas are found throughout the southeast and a lot of them in Florida. And of course they're diving birds that eat fish. They come up to the surface of the water and they toss the fish in the air in order to swallow it head first. Tip six is to go out during extreme weather conditions and try to get those common species sitting in the rain or the snow or even a fog, anything like that where there's something happening in the atmosphere that's unusual or a little bit different. You don't always see an animal in the rain, for example, and that makes great shots. Tip number seven is to stop the action of whatever it is that you're photographing even if it's the most common species that we've all seen a thousand times, if you get a super fast shutter speed, something like a four thousandth of a second or an eight thousandth of a second, and you just capture that stop action of the motion, that can be a very compelling image and it will make even a common species look extraordinary. So here you can stop the water droplets like I did with this morning dove taking a bath or with this seagull taking off out of the water. And then here's another shot of a duck running across the water. And this one's one of my favorites. This is a royal tern that had a shrimp in his mouth that somehow he dropped and then was flipping it in the air to try and capture it again. And the last tip for common species is to get in really close, especially when they're friendly animals, such as the Canada geese here in Colorado. They allow me to approach as close as I want sometimes and to just show part of the animal, just its eye or just its head feathers or a pattern on its wing or things like that can really make extraordinary images even though these species are things that people see every day. When you find a very common species, but you go in super tight and you just show a piece of that species, like I did here with this bison, it becomes more of a piece of art rather than just a photograph. The artfulness of the way a pelican's feathers look when it tucks its head in for a rest. Or how about an anhinga where you get very close and just show the beautiful feathers on its back and on its neck. Same thing goes for a cattle egret. How many people have seen a cattle egret out in a field and just ignored it? But if you photograph a cattle egret during the breeding season, the colors can be beautiful. Same with a boat-tailed grackle. How about here we have a female and a male up in the same area? And those are okay shots. I got some decent backlight. But then I had one singing. And then I found one that let me get very close and he was also singing and it becomes more of a compelling shot when you're that close to such a bird. Even though that bird doesn't have a lot of color, it still makes for a great shot. So hopefully you can see that it's actually not all that difficult to get some amazing, extraordinary images of the most common species that we've all seen in our backyard or at the city park or wherever you go to do your wildlife photography. And hopefully you learned something from this video and you can put these into practice in your own wildlife photography. And as always, I appreciate you watching my videos and we'll see you soon.